Winter has finally come to Westeros and some crazy stuff is about to go down. It's hard to believe, but some of the main characters have actually survived and soon we'll be seeing them once again battle it out for the Iron Throne. Although the characters we've been watching for so long are now instantly recognizable, there was a chance at the beginning of the show that we would be looking at a completely different cast. Most of the actors would have made sense, but some of these names may surprise you. Who are you? I am the gift. But before we totally change the way you view the cast of Game of Thrones, now is the perfect time to hit the like button and subscribe to CBR. With White Walkers on the horizon, you might not have time to later. Tamsin Merchant, Daenerys Targaryen. Tamsin Merchant is best known for her roles as Catherine Howard in The Tudors, Anne Hale from the TV show Salem, and most recently Lyra Strayed on Supergirl. In 2009, she auditioned for the part of Daenerys Targaryen and secured the role. Tamsin actually played Daenerys in the pilot episode and was officially part of the show. Once the pilot was finished, HBO decided they really didn't like it, and the show was almost scrapped. Thankfully, the creators went back to work and reshot almost the entire episode which we now know as Winter is Coming, the first episode of the show. One of the many major changes to the episode was the part of Daenerys. The role was given to Amelia Clark, and Tamsin no longer has anything to do with the show. There was never an official reason as to why the part was recast, but George R. R. Martin did come out and say there was nothing wrong with Tamsin's performance. <laughs> Unfortunately, she is basically the dwarf planet Pluto of Game of Thrones. Once a beloved member of the family, now just a tiny cold rock floating out in space, just like Pluto. The things I do for love. <laughs> Jamie Bamber, Jamie Lannister. It's hard to imagine anyone else besides Nikolai Coster Waldo as Jamie Lannister, the Kingslayer, but the role could have just as easily gone to Jamie Bamber, who auditioned for the part. Bamber is no stranger to film and especially television. He's acted in Battlestar Galactica, Law and Order UK, NCIS, Marcella, and Fearless. He is obviously more than qualified for the part and could have done a great job as Jamie Lannister, but he came up just a little too short. Like, literally. The character is supposed to be relatively tall so standing at a below average male height of 5'9", Bamber didn't really fit the description. On the other hand, Nikolai is 6'2", and devilishly handsome. My point is, we don't choose whom we love which makes him perfect for the role. Bamber is a great actor, and he brings a lot to the roles he plays in other TV shows, but unless they were able to give him platform boots, it just wasn't gonna work out. Imagine his fight against Brienne of Tarth. It would have been over in a matter of seconds. She would have squashed him like a bug. Maybe Bamber would have had a better luck trying out for Jamie's brother Tyrion. It's the last thing you'll see before you die. Trisha Helfer, Cersei Lannister. Yet another Battlestar Galactica actor tried out for Game of Thrones and didn't make the cut. Trisha Helfer knows a a thing or two about being on a long-running cult show for nerds. She played number six for six years on Battlestar Galactica, and since then she not only has been typecast as a sci-fi actress, but also has lent her voice to a variety of video games. You may have heard her voice pop up in Mass Effect 2, Starcraft 2, Halo 3 ODST, and Mortal Kombat X. Due to her impressive resume of all things nerdy, you'd think she'd be a shoe in for Game of Thrones. Alas, she auditioned for the part of Cersei Lannister, and there's just no topping that beautiful yet haunting look that Lena Headey has when murdering her victims. Trisha won't even watch the series, but it's for an entirely different reason. She's actually a big fan of the books, and she wants her experience to be uninhibited by the show. We have trouble waiting a week for a new episode. It's hard to imagine what it would be like waiting for years for the book series to be finished. Thank you, sir. I want you. Jennifer L. Catelyn Stark Jennifer L. is an English-American actress who has been seen on TV, film, and on the stage. Her most recognizable role is that of Elizabeth Bennet from the BBC miniseries Pride and Prejudice. She is another prime example of giving up the role of a lifetime along with a huge chunk of cash. L. was the first choice for the role of Catelyn Stark, and she portrayed the character in the pilot episode. But just like Tamsin Merchant, she parted ways from the most popular HBO series of all time. At first, there was no announcement as to why the casting change occurred, but that it was a mutual decision. Later, Elle said in an interview that she abandoned the show because she had just had a child and didn't want to start such a massive project while trying to raise a family. Just like Rob Stark, she chose family over her career, and look where it got them. Elle had an opportunity to take part in one of the loveliest weddings on TV, but missed her shot. Michelle Farley secured the role after Elle's departure, and now she's the one with the happy ending. Wait, still too soon? Not just for me, but for you. 
You've been so kind, I'd feel terrible. Izzy Michael Small, Sansa Stark. Izzy is the spitting image of Sophie Turner. The two girls were the final two candidates to play Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones, and of course the role ultimately went to Sophie Turner. Izzy felt that she really nailed the audition, but it just wasn't meant to be. She did say it's for the best, though, because they tend to show a lot of skin on the show, and her parents wouldn't be too happy with that. We think her parents would have changed their tone, though, if they realized just how massive the show was going to be, not to mention the opportunity given to Sophie as a result of her role on Game of Thrones. Because of her success on the show, Sophie was given the chance to play Jean Grey in X-Men Apocalypse. Izzy, on the other hand, hadn't had much work in terms of career and acting. She's been in a handful of things, but it seems she's mostly stuck being cast as the younger version of main characters. She was a young Ravina in Snow White and The Huntsman, the young version of Kathy in Never Let Me Go, and young Estella in The Great Expectations miniseries. No more killing, no more disappearances, no more calls. Dominic West, Mance Raider. Now here we have a big star that almost made his career even bigger. Dominic West was offered a part on Game of Thrones, but he ultimately turned it down. It was another instance where the actor didn't want to spend too much time away from his family during filming, which is a bit ironic because his nephew is one among many fans that were upset that he didn't take the role. He couldn't remember the name of the character they wanted him to play, but he did say that he would be required to go to Iceland for six months. Because most of the scenes shot north of the wall are done in Iceland, it's safe to assume that the party turned down was that of Mance Raider. There may have been a miscommunication, however, since the shooting schedule actually only took six weeks. West acted in 60 episodes of The Wire, and when the season ended in 2008, it would have been the perfect time to keep his momentum going and jump in with Game of Thrones. Although he would have made a great wildling, Dominic West will never hold the title of King Beyond the Wall. Without the king. Winter may be coming, but I'm afraid the same cannot be said for my brother. Sam Hewen, Renly Baratheon, Loris Tyrell. Is there any Outlander fans out there? This one will be especially disappointing for you. Sam Hewen stars as Jamie Fraser on The Star Show, which is really Sam's first introduction to American audiences. He could have his big break much sooner, though, if he had just landed one of the roles he auditioned for on Game of Thrones. In fact, he wanted to be on the show so badly that he tried out for seven different roles. In an interview, we talked about coming very close to landing a few different roles, including a couple members of the Night's Watch, Loris Tyrell, and Renly Baratheon. You could easily pluck him out of Outlander, put him in the place of Finn Jones as Loris, and no one will be able to tell the difference. As far as Renly goes, he doesn't exactly look like him, but if you cut Sam's hair, he actually looks more like a brother to Stannis Baratheon than Ghent and Anthony does as the character. But as regrettable as it is that he isn't on Game of Thrones, there is a chance that he may have prevented him from getting the leading role in Outlander, so we can't be too upset. Mr. Carter, you're broke. Your roof's leaking, bills stacking up. Trouble with the missus, she clears off to Watford. I mean, it happens to the best of us. Danny Dyer, Pip. This name may not be familiar to those of you in the States, but Danny Dyer is an established actor across the pond. He's known for his work on stage as well as the screen, most notably his recurring role on the show East Enders, for which he's been in almost 500 episodes to date. Much like all of the other actors in the United Kingdom, Dyer auditioned for the show, throwing his hat in the ring three different times, including once for the role of Piper. He talks about his auditions on the Jonathan Ross show while sitting next to Dame Diana Rigg, who plays Lady Olena Tyrell in Game of Thrones. She told him she'd put in a good word for him if he loses his Cockney accent. Another part he would have been perfect for is Weimar Royce. He has the same look as Rob Oslier, but the actor who played Weimar, or at least more so than Jamie Campbell Bauer, who also auditioned for Weimar. In fact, Bauer got the part of Weimar and played him in the pilot, but when it came time for reshoots, he was too busy playing a vampire in the Twilight series. They don't want to have anything to do with us. Well, stop. Gillian Anderson, question mark? Gillian is a Chicago-born actress famous for her roles in The X-Files, The Fall, and Hannibal. Gillian auditioned for the show, but refuses to say which part she tried out for. Given that everyone else who auditioned looks extremely similar to the character they auditioned for, we can only assume that Gillian was considered for the part of the White Walker at the end of season two. <laughs> Kidding, of course. The most likely candidates that she might have auditioned for are Cersei Lannister or Melisandre, the Red Woman. 
woman. She looks the part for both characters, but there's just no competing with Lena Headey for the role of Cersei. However, she definitely could have pulled off playing the role of Melisandre. Just picture her with red hair and then stick her in a dark cave giving birth to a shadow demon. Hey, she's perfect, right? Not that Carice Van Houten didn't do an awesome job balancing sexy and beyond creepy, but Jillian would certainly do the part justice. Apparently, though, she's in the business of turning away from popular TV shows because she was also offered a role in the part of Downton Abbey, but she turned it down. Nothing makes this woman happy. Hey, maybe she would be good as Cersei. Every time that cannon goes off, it's music to my ears. I don't care about any of them. Good to hear. Sam Claflin, Jon Snow. You may know Sam Claflin as Finnick from the Hunger Games series or Philip from Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, but there was a chance you could have known him from Game of Thrones as Jon Snow. He joked in an interview that every British actor auditioned for the HBO series and revealed that he actually auditioned for two characters, the other being Viserys Targaryen, Daenerys Stormborn's brother. He may have had a shot at one of the roles, but he had his hands full with Pirates of the Caribbean at the time, and things just didn't line up. Yes, he missed out an amazing opportunity, but he says he's glad in a way because he loves the show and gets to enjoy it with all the rest of the fans. Although he isn't part of the show, he still has a few ties to some of the Game of Thrones cast members. On the Hunger Games set, he met Natalie Dormer, who plays Cressida in the movie, and Marjorie Tyrell in Game of Thrones. And most recently, he worked with the mother of dragons, Amelia Clark, in the film Me Before You. My lady, I beg the honor. Let me be your champion. The honor should be mine. For the love I bore your lord husband, let me avenge his death. I'll fight for you, my lady. My honor. Allow me, my lady. Your lady. Your lady. Your lady. Your lady. So, what do you think? Could any of these actors have done a better job than the ones cast on the show? Let us know in the comments. If you want to get really creative, give us your dream cast for the entire series. Don't forget to click on the like button before you watch our next video. And be sure to subscribe to CBR and join the notification squad for all the latest and greatest content this side of Westeros.